Hello friends, this is Ruben. Uh, welcome to Bring It Home. Uh, this was a really, uh, not a last minute initiative, but it was uh, really, <laughs> it was an opportunity for us to get some conversations rolling. And I have right, here right. my really good friend, Sebastian. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. How you doing, man? Dude, I'm good, man. I'm good. Uh, excited. You know, we just, you know, in the midst of all this, I, can, I think it's been crazy just having to stay home and all that. As pastors, you know, it's kind of weird. Uh, yeah, especially because all our work is engaging with people and the church members, everyone outside. So, yeah, I'm doing good. Uh, besides that, it's nice to have some quality time with my wife and just be home. So. Oh, I thought, I thought you were going to say me. <laughs> oh, I mean, with you too. <laughs> no, with you too, right. man. So. Yeah, man. I mean, it's been weird. I like, I, I mean, I didn't know how like social uh, ministry can be, uh, especially when you are like dealing with people one-on-one uh, -on -one and visiting them. Uh, right, right. And right. just... You know, it's it's so weird, and this is why I decided to start this uh, this conversations. You know, bring it home, and actually, you were kind of like the reason why I started this. Uh, okay, for man, real, that's cool. That's cool. For that's real, cool. like I think it was one or two, one week ago when you sent me a message saying right, like, "Hey, right. uh, do you have any video regarding uh, like what to do, like hope or stuff, like regarding right, this situation right, right. with the coronavirus?" Right. And man, I was like, dude, I haven't seen a single YouTube video, but I, I some, uh, well, this has been a great opportunity to actually oh, yeah. have these conversations, man. Uh, yeah. like sometimes like I, right now, load Grand speed word, and yeah. stuff. Mm -hmm. It's, it's because it's like a little, uh, there's been, a, there's been like some issues with Comcast with spectrum and stuff. Oh, uh, I okay. guess. So it's like, in, I see like right now it's in red. So probably people won't be able to, to, to <laughs> hear as well, but, yeah. uh, I'm recording this at least record okay. stuff and, and right, 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 yeah. right. And do that. Yeah. And yeah. well, let me, let me double check what's up with yeah, this. Check, uh, it out. check it out. Actually, I, I think I know what it is. Uh, I think I know what it is. <laughs> the learning process. The first time, first time we go. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, I, I told you guys, you know, expect problems, uh, expect issues uh it's been actually my my fault it's been actually my uh -oh. fault man because oh really i've been <laughs> yeah you know you know this is what happened um i've been uploading i've been uploading some stuff uh to my google drive like yeah. 12 gigabytes of stuff and right right and i forgot to pause it right now so it's been using like the whole like world run and <laughs> right, stuff right, so sorry that, guys yeah, yeah. sorry guys if you if you've been like experiencing this like uh stuff my internet it's okay it's just like i've been using google drive right now and it's been right, like right sinking 12 gigabytes of stuff so right uh, i i hope that you are hearing us well now and actually right. it says that the health of this live stream is fine it's actually better yeah okay yeah yeah what do you end up doing man what, what, what do you do today man so today i you know saturday i don't know how it's been for you but uh saturdays we've been live streaming from church so we we're using zoom uh for our sabbath school so we've been using the breakout room functions for that and so yeah. i'm in charge of that so that's that's a lot of mental work there and then we have a live stream that we do of the whole worship service. So, uh, so yeah, Saturdays can get pretty busy and emotionally just tiring now, especially even though we're not doing church, church like normally, it's still yeah. a lot, you know, bro. I've so been, I've been yeah. busier. I've been busier. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. It's so interesting, man, to see that. I feel the yeah. same way. I, yeah. I was, I, I think someone on the, on our Facebook chat of our group of the pastors were saying, you know, do you feel busier now or later? <laughs> and I and feel like people... I've been busier this week. Yeah. I feel like I've been busier now. It's, it's interesting. <laughs> And some people have been saying like conspiration theories that I mean the the whole virus thing was like uh, Zoom like uh, behind all this you know <laughs> right right <Because> Zoom <laughs> is becoming really popular after this right, uh, right, whole right. thing you know mm -hmm, it used mm -hmm. to be like a really niche I mean people I mean I guess some businesses and some conferences were using it but now it's like everywhere right 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 and and, and this is sponsored by Zoom not it's not, it's a, <laughs> no, it's not. yeah no, it's not. so, so we have some them. friends here we have some friends Anthony hey uh, uh good to good to see that you're here man uh Pastor Benjamin Garcia Jose Briones hey man how you doing yeah, Jose, Gerardo Jose. he yeah he says like great initiative um okay. also my my father-in-law so I should uh actually watch my language you know yeah and you gotta you gotta be careful <laughs> you you know what like uh i don't know like one of the first uh, before before i got married with cassie uh -huh. like i mm -hmm. think i think it was one week before uh my father-in-law took me out shooting you know yeah and Ooh, i think okay. he wanted to give me like a good idea about how good his aim was mm -hmm. and i gotta be like behaving you know otherwise yeah, yeah, things yeah. wouldn't go well no it's kidding don you're you're awesome <laughs> uh, 
you're awesome and that's funny that's funny well and uh, going back again like the reason why i'm doing this uh it's because i want to have conversations with friends man yeah. like you i and love it i don't know I when it. i don't know how i don't know how i how i met you do you remember bro i i do actually i was thinking about it the other day i think our first because we were both in the seminary obviously yeah at, at andrews time. yeah and but there, remember that time that we did a we did a worship thing at claudio was preaching at a church in in south bend i think a spanish church for a campaña right and so i think yeah. when uh leif invited me to come play piano for that yeah. group and i think enoch was there leif and you were playing cajon and i think that was the first time that we actually like oh bro that's my cajon right there where and you got it in the back yeah, yeah in the i have back. mine too uh you cannot, can't really cannot. see your mind but yeah yeah, that, yeah. I have my cajon bro. and my my piano my guitar yeah so i think that was the first time and then we obviously played soccer together and did all that so yeah so what is a Sebastian Lopez for people that don't know you? What is a Sebastian? Yeah. Well, I am a, what, oh, that's a good question. I've never heard that. What is a Sebastian? And I like it because you and, and Rich have great questions in your podcast too. So that's, uh, that's fine. Oh, shout out to Rich. He's actually <laughs> watching right Rich. now. I see, I hey, saw him, I clarity, saw man. Yeah, clarity. Like, clarity, yeah. clarity. Um, so what is a Sebastian? So I am a, a happily, you know, the, the corny joke in the seminary, a happily married man to one yes. wife you know married to one wife uh, yes uh, 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 to work with youth and young adults to lead them closer to christ and um i love just life too i love sports uh music just connecting with people and so it's kind of hard during this time to not be able to go out so yeah that's kind of who i am yeah i don't know i don't know what other yeah. i'm half Mexican, i think we i think we played so soccer kinda, right we did we played uh i don't know if we did indoor but we did outdoor i think yeah that last yeah. semester yeah yeah we did we did i i think the last you... semester at andrews were like no, mixing no. together for me right 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 yeah mine too all that time i'm just like where who was i what was i doing what was yeah it's all a blur <laughs> <laughs> yeah man but uh, so fun. you say you're half mexican half argentinian that's it that's where the soccer uh the soccer love comes in all right all right so so dude have you been playing soccer lately I have it after seminary that went downhill i've been playing a lot of basketball at our church we have a lot of brazilians right. and, and and portuguese uh, and they people. play basketball more than soccer well they do play soccer we just haven't gone to play soccer we just been playing more basketball so yeah it is what it is it is what it is hey man have you been playing a lot or no no man like i think last year i only played like a couple of times and uh this is not to throw shade or anything but uh <laughs> when I, I i'm used to a different kind of soccer and uh oh. like i think a year ago when we went with some church members to go to a championship yeah uh, you know championships are like really rough but it was yeah. supposed to be a yeah. christian championship you know as christians mm -hmm. we're supposed to That's like tough. behave never, when we play yeah. soccer yeah you yeah. know but it was not like that it was like it was not an adventist one it was like a christian oh, there were like I different see. christian churches like a baptist and evangelical like many different churches that had their teams and so we had their team for a seven day adventist church and dude i played that beautiful game says Richard. He got actually injured while playing soccer game. a right. year ago, and, and I got injured, bro. Like, oh yeah, the I first game, that. yeah, I they broke, that. I bro they broke my rib, bro, and like, it was so awful. What? In the and I, yeah, yeah, the guy just tackled me. Like it was like he thought it was like oh, football, I guess. Oh, yeah, man. but hey, uh, oh, let's man. dive in into the conversation for today, huh? Yeah, yeah, let's do that. Let's do it. So uh, the the reason why you are here, it's because you actually pitched me the idea of uh talking about hope in this time of like uh pandemia right? we can do a spanglish too all right pandemia see see <laughs> what, what is the word in english no. pandemic spanglish. pandemic pandemic yeah pandemic yeah, pandemic, yeah. yeah. so uh how can we how can we do like uh hope in the world in this world like uh, the this fill with uh uncertainty uh, yeah. uh fear you know and uh, what, what can we talk about this like as an introduction you know the answer is Jesus, right? That's it. Yeah. Just leave it there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's true. It's true. I mean, hey, it is it's true, it man. Is, it is true. It's true. As, even though we joke about it, it is true. Um, yeah, I guess to start it off, it's, it's. I think the one thing, the burden I had, and I think we all pastors have, you know, as, as we know, we're, we're, we're taught to be shepherds over our people and yeah, and at, at a large group. I think we all see this, and we talked about this when we got together and, and we're planning this out of how important it is to really focus on the right thing, you know, which yeah. is hope 
La esperanza es Jesús, you know. La esperanza. That's what we say. That, that we say in Spanish. Yeah, we say like right. la esperanza de Jesús. Jesús, you know. Amen. Amen. And, and, and this has been a, a recurring topic for our Seventh Day Adventist Church, you know, like yeah. speaking yeah. about hope. And I think it's good and bad at the same time. It's good because yeah. we are pushing this word, but it's bad because sometimes we lose the meaning of the word by using it so much. I mean, it, right. it happened right. to me so many right. times that God is being so good with me that the blessings that I received from mm -hmm. him, they became mm -hmm. like so routine that I stopped counting them, you right. know, and I, I actually take them for granted. Yeah. So uh, actually, that, that's 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 good uh, to to realize and, and I, I really love the song uh, from for king and country crave mm -hmm. have you heard it bro that's or my favorite I have, song I, don't know if I have yeah it says hope is what we crave oh hope is okay. what we crave da, 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 yeah. da. it's really 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 nice song i really like it yeah, yeah, I um here here we have a uh, joe puretti oh joe spanglish being latino at the, uh, all right joe <laughs> joe representative pr, PR. uh Yeah, Ronnie Ruiz is a, is a close friend, and we have Dan uh, Dan Hilasaka, a friend too. Like, um, all right. So going going to the part of, of hope, uh, how mm -hmm. can we stop making hope just a word and becoming something ingrained in our lives? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good part. That's a good part. Um, I think now, at least for me, like like you were saying, it's so easy for us to, it's so easy, you know, we've been heard it since we were brought up in the church, if we were in whatever, uh -huh. uh, you know, you hear Esperanza, you hear, and it's so easy to like, you know, oh, okay, good. But it's in times like this, I think that we truly, that the rubber hits the road and you're like, okay, are, do you really trust God to be who he proclaim he is, you know, yeah. most of the time? Do you really trust him yeah. to be the, the healer in the midst of a pandemic and the provider in the midst of financial crisis, right? Yeah. Uh, there's a there's a quote I just read and I I, I hope to I hope to be fact checked and I hope to be that it's right. But All I right. haven't read Screw Tape Later by C. S. Lewis, but supposedly in that book I was reading seeing it floated around that in his book C. S. Lewis says this line, which I thought was very interesting. He says that Satan says these things. He says, I will cause anxiety, fear, and panic. I will shut down businesses, schools, places of worship and sports events. I will cause economic turmoil. And he's going to do all that. And then Jesus counters that. And he says, in the midst of that, as Satan goes about doing all these things that we're looking at now, especially with the pandemic and the shutting down yeah. of schools and businesses and chaos, Jesus says, I will bring together neighbors, restore the family unit. I will bring dinner back to the kitchen table. I will help people slow down their lives and appreciate that what really matters. I will teach Ooh. my children to rely on me and not the world. I will teach my children to trust me and not their money and material resources. So I was like, man, that's pretty, that's pretty powerful. Wow. You know, C.S. So, Lewis, C.S. Lewis always brings it home. Man. Always. He brings the fire. Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. always, he's got it. And so to see that, I was like, man, it's so true. Cause, and I think that's one step that we can do that as we're in this pandemic, I think it's, it's good and it's necessary to be alert and aware of what's going on. The statistics, the, 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 the infection rate, whatever you want to call it, you know, your precautions in your community and the mandates that your general, you know, cities and and count towns and country and uh, states are saying but at the same time is it's like how do you filter what you're receiving right and i think c.s lewis points it beautifully yeah, that's like yeah in the midst of that look at the positive and and it's like beautiful because i know i've been thinking about this i'm just been running 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 the whole time for the last year as a pastor and now i have a time to really sit down and i don't have to go anywhere and i have yeah. time to spend and connect with god and, and connect with my wife yeah. and read yeah. a book you know and things that we've been so busy not to not be able to do like god i think is allowing this to be an, op an opportunity for us to yeah reconnect with him which i think is you know yeah that's awesome yeah bro like uh richard says like uh mercy that's, that's so quotable man he says like coming yeah, to yeah. a sermon near to you uh, <laughs> near you i mean uh Hey, yeah, it, it, yeah. it was not Sebastian's quote. It was C.S. Lewis. So it's, so it's like you can you can attribute it to him. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, this is why I kind of have like a, a struggle with the word that we use, which is social distancing, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. uh, when we when we say social distancing, that kind of right. means that we need to distance each other like in a social level. I think I'll be more comfortable with a physical distancing because mm -hmm. we as human right, beings, right. I think hope spreads also socially that's what i believe i believe mm -hmm. that i mean if you are connected with people yeah. with relationships you have uh, the, a better chance of actually uh having hope in your life you know yeah yeah, yeah. so hey it, i don't know if we can make a like a like a hashtag or something like it's not social distancing it, it, we shouldn't call it that way if anything yeah. we should be more connected socially 
Mm -hmm. uh, we mm -hmm. may not be connected physically. Right now, we are physically far from each other. You are yeah, in Florida. Right. I'm in North Carolina. Right. And I don't know where y'all are watching from. Y'all, I mean, doing the Southern, y'all. Yeah, but uh, we mm -hmm. need to actually be more, be more social with each other, you know, like be yeah. uh, connected. And right. that also ultimately provides a better uh, platform for God to give us hope, you know? No, yeah. agreed, agreed 100%. Yeah, and I think it's so important, especially now, you know, we've been going through a, a, a series in our church over the book of Acts and seeing how they dealt Ooh. with chaos and persecution and... Uh, Richard said physically distant, socially connected. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> hey, let's use this hashtag. The, I mean, the PD, the PDSC, you know, physically. distant. Yeah. So, so really <laughs> but we've been going over that and it's been interesting to see kind of the parallels. Right. But the difference, the biggest difference, I think, is how, how we are able through our technology today to connect with people like you're saying and still be social. Uh, like yeah. you said, distant, but still connected, you know. Yeah. And so something that maybe the early church didn't have was was being able to Zoom together and have Skype and FaceTime and even this, you know, Facebook Live yeah. where you can do all this. And then it's for free. Right, Richard, you're reading my mind. It's all for free and present. For free. Well, and, for free, you know, mm, 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 for free. I mean, it depends. <laughs> if you want quality, then you got to pay. Right? <laughs> well, it, but it is worth it. Yeah, it's worth it. It's worth it, it is it. worth it, right? And it in is, this time and age, I think that we need to invest as as pastors, as ministers, as people to to try to push the word. Right. Sometimes I'm a techie, you know, you know me. I'm a, I'm a techie. I I love like finding be better ways yeah. to communicate. Oh, yeah, and right. sometimes we right. get lost right. in the equipment and we forget that yep. it's been always about the message, you know. Hmm. And okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. like we get lost in equipment but right like we have to realize that as you were saying in, in the book of acts people didn't have that yet holy yeah, spirit right, right. I, actually that actually pushed them to trust more in the holy spirit mm -hmm, mm -hmm. than in the technology right now we can't right, trust right. that technology is going to take us like in right. different parts of the world but right. back then they didn't have this and they still were able to effectively communicate the gospel of jesus christ so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I guess that's a that's a moment of clarity, as we call it with Rich. That's, it. Uh, that's a moment of clarity. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So not, not not to trust on your man made, the the methods of, of our or the the means by which you pr present the message, because at some point, you know, this this is gonna backfire as it does. You know, at, at, even in our live stream last, you know, yesterday we had, you know, you have technical difficulties. You know, yeah. Zoom, I think, is just overloaded on Sabbath <laughs> with Saturday with, with Seventh Day Adventists using it all over the world. They're just like, what is Bro. going on? You know. So obviously it's not a perfect means, but it's a great means for this time being. Yeah, yeah. Like Zoom is <laughs> right now, I think it's saturated. And oh, uh, yeah. but there's other options, you know. If you guys yeah. know, like there's yeah. also Google, uh, Google Hangouts the Meet, Hangouts. which mm -hmm. is really good, uh, up to 100 people. There's also Itzy oh, nice. Meet, which is a free one as well. Okay. I'll I probably can drop some links. Yeah, that'd be uh, nice. It's not. Okay. It's not I'm trying to sh throw in shade on Zoom. It's like there are other options because I I feel yeah. that Zoom is overloading right now. Yeah, I yeah. think it might, yeah, the systems might be crashing or something. They're just not used to yeah. so many people. Yeah, it's a lot of people. Right now, <laughs> Richard says, <laughs> you can take you can take the man out of clarity, but not the clarity out of the man. <laughs> By the way, we're we're having a new episode right now with the one and only Caleb Isley, uh, Humans Ooh. of Adventism. This this Wednesday, this yeah, Wednesday yeah. is releasing this Wednesday. So this is, a, is awesome. an ad for clarity. It was Great. a, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. That's a great initiative, too. And that's another, you know, another another key story there where you can using the means you have, you know, in social media to promote these positive stories and views of Adventism that creates a whole movement, you know, so it's yeah, it's awesome. What the, the potential of using social media and these platforms is, you know, unmatched. There, right there's, there's potential. There's yeah, potential. And but it's not about the the the. The, the technology itself is just how we use it and how we deliver it. Eh? Right, right, right. Yeah, and this is not right. a tech review either, too. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah. so let's let's go back to hope. Uh, yeah, yeah, there's yeah. been a there's been a, I mean the reason is that there's been a group of people that are being using uh, fear in order to push mm -hmm. uh, a religious agenda. You know, especially yeah. when it comes to eschatology, right, which right. Uh, eschatology is the 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 studies of the last time events. Mm -hmm. Right? Am I right? Like it's, yeah, 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 yeah. It's hatos and logos. Like if mm. my Greek is still, it's still there and still works, <laughs> it's intact. All right, all right. So it's the study of the last time events, and sometimes we use uh, moments like this, moments of pandemics or earthquakes or right. 
situations that are make make us feel afraid in order to push uh, a message mm -hmm. but how, what, what you can say about it man so i yeah it's just like you know the core of this is just you hear a lot of time when things happen you know i remember in 2008 when the economy fell you know dvds and videos were coming out of people saying we predicted this you know the end is near and if oh, yeah. you think about it it's been 12 years since that happened which is crazy and i remember in that time i was bike I would, I, it was a summer i was biking with my friend and we thought like jesus was coming at that point which is not a bad thing to feel why 2k bro exactly yeah even that you can go every you know century every, there's always moments where we're thinking this is the end i'm sure people that lived in world war one world war two were thinking the same thing and you know the great depression and all that um but at this point what you see that you have pro loud voices rise up that are trying to instill fear and you're focusing on the fear to turn people to God and God never uses force or fear or, or, or any of that to compel people to love him. You know, it's, Ellen White has this beautiful quote that says that it is only by love that love is awakened, you know, Oof. and so God, God only doesn't, he's not using this to force you to love him. He's saying, Hey, look, in the midst of this pain and the midst of this chaos and confusion and trials, you can turn to someone that still has, your best and that in the midst of the storm i'm going to be with you right so um, hey that's one thing awesome that man yeah one thing i've been thinking about a lot is matthew 24 and 25 and obviously different passages in the bible but you know jesus is talking to his disciples and they're you know we, we use these chapters a lot to talk about what happened before jesus come into this but at the core of it, Jesus is it, what I'm what I'm reading this and when I'm understanding and, and, and through the spirit's guidance that when I study this, I, I realize that it's not necessarily telling us a, a matter of when is it going to happen or how is it going to happen? Yes. But it's more of like, what are we supposed to doing? What are we supposed to be doing in the time yes. that we're waiting for this to happen? You know? Yes, because we, we usually quote a Matthew 24 when. Uh when we are referring to the last time events, but we forget that Matthew 24 is also connected with Matthew 25. Right, and Matthew right. 25 also speaks about like the parable of the 10 virgins, you know? Right, and right, right. the reality is in the story of the parable of the 10 virgins, the 10 of them fell asleep, bro. Exactly. Not not the, it wasn't just the five bad ones or the, it's, it's everyone. Everyone fell asleep. Yeah. Yep. And, and that was for me like a big like story, mo like a big eye opening moment that uh, mm -hmm. if the 10 of them like fell asleep, it's not like they, they did all the best they could in order to be prepared for for the for the bridegroom. But at the end, it didn't matter if they were prepared or not. The, the bridegroom right. came when they were not expecting. Right. So exactly. in, instead of us trying to uh, devote ourselves, like uh, figuring out where the bridegroom is coming, we have to realize at some point we may or may not fall asleep. Mm -hmm. It's up to us to have like the the oil. I feel I feel the, the connection with the Holy Spirit too as well. Yeah, there, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's so easy, you know. It's uh, you, I, you hear all the time, you know. It's just like, hey, the Pope is doing this. The Pope is having a secret Vatican meeting with the with the con, you know, with the not the General Conference with the with the, with <laughs> no. the Senate with the Senate. I'll, and the I'll, I'll, I'll edit this part out. Yeah, I'll edit this out. part out. <laughs> <laughs> the first thing that came to mind. But, you know, they're just they're having a, a you know, a, a multi national meeting and the Sunday law is coming. And I think and my big fear talking about fear and hope, my big fear is that we're so focused on the pope that we miss out on God and Jesus at this time. Ooh. And we miss out on. on and, and we actually and we actually oh, do yeah. what we don't want to do, because as we right. we believe as catalogically that uh, there is going to be the little horn that is going to try to pretend to be like God and try to, like, take the the our eyes from from God to the little horn. And yeah. we are actually doing that. We're giving like the platform to put eyes on what's happening there. Wow. Right, 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 right. So it's <laughs> Richard. <Yeah>. <laughs> 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 oh man, oh man. So, so yeah, so it's just, I, I, I feel like, I think it is important and I will agree that I think it's important for us to be alert. I think that Paul talks about it in countless times. You read the letter to the first, the first letter to the Thessalonians where he's like, be alert, you know, not, you're not asleep, you're not drunk. You're awake, be alert. But at the same time, he's saying, but you don't know when or how it, this is all going to play out. You just got to stay mm. alert and stay actively mm. waiting, which is a term that Ranko Stefanovic told us in in, in our eschatology classes. class. Eschatology class, yeah. So that's my big thing now, which is like, I'm, I don't want to focus on the fear. I want to be aware of, of what's going on. Obviously, I don't want to be in the dark and I want to see the big player movements, I guess, if you want to call it. But yeah, yeah. I don't want to focus on it so much that I miss out on what my mission truly is at this time. It's not to 
my mission, God didn't, Jesus didn't leave and tell the disciples, all right, I need you to go to the world, stay where you are. And when it gets tough, go into the woods and just, but just watch Ooh. to see when I'm coming. I, I just want Ooh. you to watch to make sure that the Romans aren't coming. I want you to make sure that, no, he said, I want you to go out and share this message and preach this message, baptize and make disciples and teach them everything I've done. So I think we're, we're not, I don't know, maybe not understanding our commission completely or, or not truly confident in that God can protect us at all times. But, you know, that's kind of where, where I'm, you know, where I, that, that fear and that hope that I believe that the, and, and the commission that God has given us doesn't really mesh sometimes when I see that, you know, it, it's true, uh, Sebastian, what you're saying. I mean, uh, yesterday I also like heard, uh, I also listened, watched a video from Ranko. Uh, I don't know if you, there was an interview between, uh, uh I think Thomas, uh, uh in Renko and Renko was oh. speaking a little bit about uh the if the coronavirus it's the, the place or the last time events and mm -hmm. and he mm -hmm. say he, he say bluntly you know how Renko is you know he says yeah, like yeah. yes or no he says no it's not my friends it's not and and it's true I mean he 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 explained a little bit about uh Matthew 24 he explained about Matthew 25 and mm -hmm. uh mm -hmm. but the thing that the like struck with me the most and that uh, just like uh uh like a moment of like connection and application he say like that the closer that you get to god you won't be afraid you'll have hope mm. the closer that you get to god you realize it's not about you it's wow. about what he's doing with you through you and wow. and wow. what he can do in your life and and he put a simple example he put an example of of the psalm 23 you know we always i i remember when i was a kid uh, back in, in Peru, I won a contest of the Psalm 23. I know it by heart, man, in Spanish wow. at least. And I, I think I was like five years old or six years old, and I, I don't remember how old I was, but I remember like uh, I won it. I got like a, a case of pencil colors, and it was so amazing. Like, uh, but 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 the I thing is like. Uh, I had to memorize it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. So so the thing is like this is something that actually when i when i heard what he said like it's it's awesome he says like the lord is my shepherd i shall not want when you speak right. about the god david starts in third person the lord he is my shepherd he is my right. shepherd right. Right. but then there is a transition like i think there's like this experience that david is having with god that he right. says like he makes me light in green pastures okay he mm -hmm. leads me beside uh, still waters he restores my soul he leads me right. in paths of righteousness but here it's where here's what it gets like awesome here's what it get, gets awesome it says even though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i will fear no evil for you are with me that's good that's good so there's a there's a transition from he is my shepherd he does this you know like a third person it's like a right. more like distant but still there but then when the problems come i think david go, goes and realizes you know like yeah. problems are going to come uh, it's not about the fear. It's not about I mean, problems are going to show up, but the second person kicks in, you know, like closer to God. And that brings uh, that brings us more hope instead of more fear. God is actually trying to embrace us closer instead mm -hmm. of like move, like force us to That's just right. hug him. You know, right, he's not right, forcing right, us right. to hug him. He's like, hey, get closer to me. I'll protect you. Right, but right. that's that's our, our our initiative. Yeah. And I think and I think when you have that understanding of who God is, right, like you're presenting it, that he is a loving father, you know, that wants the best. He's not going to put us in in the way of danger. Then it's we can more confidently go out and face whatever we have to face. You know, um, I wow. just think of Paul and I've been reading and I'm just like, man, Paul just was not afraid to go through persecution when he could have been like, man, I the ultimate goal is knowing Jesus. So I can just retire and go back to uh, uh, Tarsus and Tarsus and and. Yeah, I don't know how you say it in English, and, and and just you know, and just live my I life. I think that's there. it. I think I'm that's fine. it. Yeah, and and he just he was just so motivated. No matter what he faced, he was confident in who God was, so he was able to continue to do, you know, what what uh what God was was sending him to do. So, yeah, I think having that hope and allowing that hope to overwhelm the fear that we may face, I think, is very important, especially at this time. Um, I do want to share one thing that I learned from our our friend. You remember? Oh, I just went blank on. Oh my goodness, I feel so bad now. But uh our friend uh he was in the seminary too. And he Oh, there are so many friends from seminary, bro. <laughs> <laughs> He's like I, I don't even um, like 
Oh man, yeah, but but he was just sharing. It's, it, the name's gonna come back. I just feel so bad. I've been messaging him back on Instagram. I'm trying to figure out. But as as he was he was saying his message, I think for the last week he was talking about the importance of being a non anxious presence in the Ooh. community. And so he was saying that a non you know that Christians throughout history have always been a non anxious presence because they have this hope that we're talking about and this belief that God is a good God, right? So they're able to Ooh. be unafraid. And and in that they don't cause more chaos and and stress and you know all that whatever it is that you want to add into that to their community because they're able to be non you know a non anxious presence in their community and I think that's what God is calling us to be at this moment in the middle of this pandemic not to be like people that are everything's on fire you know you've seen that meme meme of like the guy sitting with the with the coffee mug <laughs> and the whole thing is on fire oh, I saw that. yeah so. Um, so it's, you know, everything's good. Everything's all right. But it's being, being okay with, Hey, everything's all right. And you know, Oh, it's Kevin Wilson. Kevin Wilson. I just remember. I'm sorry. Oh, Kevin, Kevin Wilson. Hey, my bad, Whoa. Kevin, my bad. But yeah, he's, 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 a great philosophy. he's really good. Oh, yeah. He's yeah. really good. He's a modern day philosopher. But he was just talking in his sermon about that being a non anxious presence in our community. And that really hit me. I was like, man, that's powerful. That's so powerful. How many Christians that we know that if you put them in a room with just community people that aren't Christians, that aren't believers would cause more chaos you know and more anxiety rather than more peace and hope because of the message that we have so yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey we, ha we have friends here like uh dan oh, yeah. carlos he Saca, like jose corrales he's a he's a pastor fellow a uh, friend from, from peru that is. Uh, oh, okay yeah and well also we we just finished uh a uh, quarter, uh, a quarterly lesson, like a uh, escuela sabatica. Mm -hmm. What do you call it in English? Like, uh, uh, yeah, the quarterly. Sad school quarterly. quarterly. Yeah, yeah, we finished that, and it was about about Daniel, and mm -hmm. I love how it ends. Like the last chapter of the last verse of Daniel, Daniel twelve thirteen. You know, and I, I was reading right, like right. Uh, Dukan's uh, Dukan's uh, commentary on on Daniel, and he he says like, well, the verse says, but you go your way until the end. And you shall rest mm -hmm. and shall stand in your allotted place at the end of the days. Wow. But it says you shall rest. You know, mm -hmm. what, what is up? What is our role is to rest assured and with hope oh, that's that, good. Good. yeah, the guy will be there with us. And, and mm -hmm. the right. other thing is like the rest here is not like, you know, you go to vacation, as you were saying, like Paul was not going to mm -hmm. back to his home place and wait till Jesus was coming. No, he, he actually right. was right. actively resting actively right. resting acti actively waiting actively mm -hmm. hoping actively you know yep, hope yep, yep. hope is not something static it's something dynamic you know it's something mm -hmm. that uh gets going gets going the holy spirit like pushes you a little bit more and you keep going and and i feel that we lose this sometimes mm -hmm. when we are trying to articulate right, historical right. points and getting mm -hmm. lost there it's like me getting lost in gear and trying not to uh realize that the message is more important than the gear oh, that's you know? good that's good yeah man so, I, I just want to shout out betin flores from macallen texas amigo all right man macallen yeah, yeah. macallen oh yeah but um yeah I, I as you were talking i was just remembering it's just like you know the, the reality that you know many times god won't take us away from the storms that we're facing you know he's not gonna rapture his people at this moment in this pandemic to not have to experience it but it reminds me of when, I, you know, when you're a child and your mom makes you this food of, you know, that has like broccoli or cauliflower, you know, cauliflower or, you know, all these vegetables that you're like, oh, I don't like it. But then she's also made you your favorite dessert at the end. Right. And so I think as a child, you kind of reason and you're like, OK, if I can get through this broccoli, if I can get through this cauliflower, <laughs> if I can get through the 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 the, the spinach I love, once I, I, love, I love broccoli bro yeah i know i love it too i love it. that's okay. why I'll, i couldn't think of I, I, I don't know why the americans always have like uh oh. the thing with with broccoli you know i've seen like so many yeah. americans <laughs> like uh cartoons that is like broccoli is like yeah well yeah keep yeah, going. Yeah. yeah but the whole point yeah it's just you know many times we you know when you're eating you're like oh i, I, I can get through this ugly part and the things that i don't like because i know what's ex what's i'm expecting at the end of the day once i'm done with this plate I know that the next thing I'm tasting is the beautiful dessert. For my mom was she would make this thing of Marias. You remember the cookies, la, la Gatitas Marias? Oh yeah. Yeah. So she would make this this postre de Marias and a lot of milk, not healthy, but very good. So I was able to go through the unsavory parts of like that I didn't want to eat, but I had to to because I knew what was coming for me at the end was this 
beautiful, you know, cake at the end. So I think in the same way now, we, when we have this hope of being forever with God, of, of him coming soon, it's easier for us to go through what we're going through because we know what we're going to, what we're expecting at the end of it, yeah. you know? Yeah. And so that hope really should drive us rather than fear being the motivating and the drivers in the driver's seat. I think hope is the one that's like, no, it's okay. Whatever happens, I know God has me, as you're saying, you know, that he is a good shepherd and he's going to protect me. Even though I am going to walk through the valley and shadow of death, he's with me. So preach, man. That, that hope, yeah. No, that's, man, that's I think it's true. It, it, like, yeah, and, yeah. and even going, going, using, still using your analogy, you know, like even broccoli, even if you don't like it, it's good for you, man. Right, exactly. Yeah, that's a great point. There it is. It's good for you. It's, it's healthy. It's good for value. you. And, yeah. And, yeah. And, and sometimes, like, we go through fires of, like, mm -hmm. trials and, and tribulations and difficulties, and we forget that, uh, I mean, this is just like a little like parenthesis compared to like the eternity that we'll have. But yeah. I, I just yeah. got to be really careful trying not to use like this language of suffering because it's never been about our suffering. Uh, that's never going to purchase our eternal uh, right. the, or eternity, you know? Right, 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 right. Yeah. yeah. It's, and, ne and it's never about how, how much you suffer that you get a higher position in heaven or something like that. But <laughs> Ruby, <laughs> Ru Ruby, bro, bro, good to see you too, man. Uh, oh man, uh, he's a Sebastian. Good to see you, Ruben Gorkin. I, I love steak. Hey man, uh, I'll pray for you. No, it's kidding. <laughs> it's kidding. I love steak too, so we're fine. We're fine. Uh, it has to be a vegetarian steak, though, right? Yeah. It's still, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, well, let's call it away. Right? <laughs> hey, cow, cow is vegetarian, man. Cow is there. They just eat grass, so. Yeah, yeah. We good. We, we good. Yeah, they're ready. <laughs> Oh, all right so but dude yeah, yeah. you I'll, I'll let you like uh bring it home right now like just as uh as like final uh words or yeah the uh, appeal uh, yeah 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 the final yeah the final thought is just that you know in the midst of this i'm gonna just use kevin wilson's words you know our desire i think god's desire for our church right now is to be a non-anxious presence in this time of COVID-19, you know, mm. to be a, a people that our neighbors can come to as they, as neighbors have always gone to Christians uh, all throughout history and say, what is it about you guys that in the midst of this pandemic, you are still giving toilet paper away? Whoa. Mm. Paper. Or you're giving hand sanitizer away. The new currency, the new, the, the new, new currency, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or that you're, you know, you're, you're unafraid of it. You're not worried. I see you going around, you're praying, you're supporting people, you're, you're feeding the, the hungry that, have lost their jobs because of, you know, the crisis and stuff, you know, you're, you're, you're going out of your way to be selfless. Um, mm. and I think if we can model that, and I think that's the last message that the world needs to see, just to see a people that loves others more than they love themselves, which is the whole message of the gospel, right? Because God transforms your heart to not seek your own interests, but to seek the interest and, and to benefit others. So that's my appeal to everyone and to myself as well. Obviously you can, you read the news and being on Twitter, it's always there, but to continue to be just, man, okay, it's okay. God's with me. And because God is with me, I can then go out and be confident and show love to others. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and so, and this, it, <laughs> yeah, yeah it's man. It's been a while. There, there's, wow. this, there's this transition then of God being like a third person to a second person. And may you uh, oh, that man. are watching uh, yeah. have that personal experience. You no, know, it's it's different just to tell, you, tell it. And we come from different backgrounds. We come from different uh, places. Mm -hmm. But Hopefully we're going to the same place and that's that's our that's prayer, it. you know. That's it. Hey that's it. Sebastian, it's been real, man. Oh, it's been good, man. Ruben, thank you for uh starting this initiative, man. I'm excited for where God takes it and where God continues to lead you, man. It's exciting. Yeah. You too, man. I mean and I think I'm gonna slot you for uh more conversations, I guess. I'll hear, man. I'll hear. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'm gonna light my background a little more better this time next time. But <laughs> hey, bro, you're looking good. You're looking thanks, awesome. Bro. Yeah. You look good too, yeah. man. I like it. I like the setup. Thanks. Yeah, you I mean I'm been trying to like work with what i had like right, but once right. again it's not not about gear it's all about like uh spreading the message yeah, that's, that's that's the most it. important that's part it. that's it uh, all right man so uh thank you for bringing it home uh thank you for uh like having a, a good conversation about hope uh Excellent. i'm yeah, gonna ask thanks. you to to lead us with a benediction and we can say uh goodbye to our friends uh here uh okay let's do that yeah let me let me pray real quick and God, we just ask that you please be with us at this moment. You know, we are uh, in the midst of a great crisis and pandemic and a global pandemic, Lord. And uh, at the same time, we, we trust you. We know that you are bigger than any problem that we may face and that are currently facing. 
So guide us in this moment as leaders, as Christians, as believers, that we may be a non-anxious presence in our community, that we may let hope drive us and not fear be the master of our our plans and our minds and our thoughts every single day. And so continue to be with us, bless us, and continue to uh, just help us to just trust in you and to allow you to lead us in the way that you want us to go. We ask this all in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thanks, Sebastian, man. Hope oh, thank you, you, Ruben. You have a good week. We'll be in touch, okay? We will. We will. All right. We'll see you all. All right. Well, guys, uh, this has been our first episode of Bring It Home. Um, I hope you guys enjoy this interaction. We're having uh, the opportunity to have great people, great speakers, great friends, and that's the most important part. And if you want to uh, stay connected, uh, just it's gonna be on my personal Facebook for now. I still, I'm still trying to figure this out. So, uh, <laughs> as we as we are trying to figure this out, uh, I'll invite you to to stay connected and stay safe and stay spreading spreading hope wherever you are. Goodbye.